everybody and welcome back to the channel HTM here and you are checking out a brand new video. This is going to be our Grind God Solo Stam Warden setup, a one bar bow build that's all about speed, insane burst damage in order to kill off big groups of enemies and bring in as much experience as quickly as possible. So if you're looking for a powerful bow build to help you level up those champion points now in update 29, this is the build for you. So let's get started. All right, everybody, here we are back on the Stamina Warden, this time with a brand new solo champion point grind build. This is part of a new series that I've started on the channel, Grind Gods. These are just really uh, fast, powerful builds made for you. If you want to start grinding up some champion points and improving your CP rank overall, uh, these builds are going to be very strong to accomplish that for you. Plus, they're just a lot of fun to play. Uh, and I've been having a lot of fun putting these together, combining them with a brand new CP 2.0 system. So we're going to do one right now on the Stamina Warden. Uh, this is a bow one bar build as well. So if you're looking for something on the bow, this is uh, going to be a very nice option for you. But let's go ahead and just jump into the stats here on the one bar setup on the bow. 13k max magicka, 21k max health, 31k max stamina. Look at those recoveries, 1000 magicka recovery, 2600 health recovery, 2100 stam recovery, 5600 weapon damage. That's actually a little bit over 6000 when, when you consider some of the sets that we're running. 51% weapon critical. Yeah, this is a pretty strong build. Of course, we have 64 points into max stamina. We're running the Lover Mundus here. For overland content, for solo arenas, instances where you want to grind champion points quickly, Lover Mundus is definitely the best way to go. We're running the Lava Foot. This gives us max stam and stamina recovery. Perfect for update 29 because we no longer need max health in most cases. Then we have Minor Berserk, Major Savagery. We'll talk about how we get all these buffs. Uh, as you can see, I am running Khajiit on this build. There are many good options for this style of build, I will say. You're not limited, really. Khajiit is nice for a few reasons. Number one, you saw those recoveries. We do get bonuses to all of our recoveries, as well as all of our stats. So in terms of just soloing, Khajiit is a pretty strong race, and it's also very strong now, both for stamina and Magicka DPS. It's a bit of a hybrid race now, very powerful. Of course, you do have the 12% crit damage and crit healing, which is uh, absolutely insane in terms of the, the bonus damage you can put out on a build. So I do like Khajiit for this setup. On the bow, it's really fun. Like I said, other races will work. Wood Elf is a great option. Anything else with stamina bonuses, so, you know, Red Guard, Nord, Orc, uh, you can make it work. But Khajiit is just what I picked for this one. In terms of consumables, we talked about the food. Uh, as far as the potion, you can use Tristat potions, but if you just want to save your money, since you're just grinding champion points anyways, just get a uh, normal trash stamina potion. That's really all you'll need for the uh, most sustained possible. So I think that covers the basics. Yeah, let's jump into the gear sets next. What makes this work? Well, I want to use something from the new Flames of Ambition DLC. So we've got Dagon's Dominion. This is a pretty powerful new set. Here's what it does. It gives you weapon damage, max stamina, weapon damage again, and almost 500 weapon damage added to our area of effect abilities. Now, this is perfect for Stam Warden because it's going to buff our Sub Assault, which is an AoE spammable. It's great for bow builds as well. Uh, if you're running any AOE abilities on the bow, which we are, then this is going to buff those as well. So basically this buffs two of our main abilities, super strong. It's going to make those hit very hard. And yeah, I just wanted to try something new. So this is from the new dungeon DLC, Flames of Ambition, like I mentioned. This one specifically drops in the cauldron. So that's one of the two dungeons there. You can just run this. I think the easiest would be five pieces on the body. So medium chest, medium waist, hands, legs, and feet. All Divines, if you can get it and just keep the max stamina enchant there, you'll be good to go. Second 5P set. Remember, we're all about quick burst damage. Something that's going to buff all of our abilities. And that's going to be New Moon Acolyte, the crafted set uh, from the Elsewhere chapter. Uh, you will need Southern Elsewhere to uh, craft this, but it is actually pretty common on guild traders. So if you, if you can't craft this yet, it is nine traits to craft this. Pretty sure you can still pick this up on Guild Traders. So if you're not familiar with this, it does give you crit chance, weapon and spell damage, offensive penetration, and then 401 weapon and spell damage. Again, at the increase of 5% of our cost of active abilities, 
Honestly, you guys, with the amount of sustain we have now in update 29, 5% cost is nothing. It's literally nothing. You don't even notice it. Um, and the extra flat weapon damage, as well as all the extra stats here, pretty nice for this uh, bow setup. So we're going to run the bow and then three pieces of jewelry, so neck and two rings. As far as the traits go, precise on the bow, I think is pretty good. Um, crit is a little bit harder to obtain in update 29, so the extra 7% uh, weapon critical does help a lot. We do have the absorb stamina enchant, though, like I said, sustain's really not an issue. And then in terms of your traits on the jewelry, since this is crafted, try to get infused. Uh, if you can, all three pieces infused, all three with weapon damage. That's going to maximize that weapon damage, like I said, so uh, close to 6k, even without a weapon damage enchant on the back bar. And then finally, finally, our monster set. You have many options for this build. Like I said, I just want something that was as easy as possible, the, the least amount of maintenance as possible. So I am uh, getting 5% bonus damage from Minor Berserk. That's the, the Slime Cross set. And I'm sure you, you realize if you know Warden, you also get this buff from an ability. So you can run uh, Bird of Prey on your front bar and run something else. But since I wanted to run a one bar bow setup, I didn't have room for Bird of Prey. And so I still want the 5% bonus damage. So that's why I picked Slime Craw for this version of the build. Um, head and shoulders there, medium. If you can get it, Divines as the trait. Max Stamina as the enchant. But tons of other good sets you can run here. The thing to know about this build is we have so much damage, so much burst damage, that things are going to die pretty much instant anyways. Uh, so things that have a delay, a set like Celestrix, you might not even have a chance to proc that on an enemy, honestly, because it's going to be dead before that goes off. So some kind of flat stat boost maybe would be the best way to go if you don't want to run Slime Craw. So that is the setup. Again, we've got Dagon's Dominion as the body set there. We've got New Moon Acolyte for the bow and the jewelry and Slime Craw for the monster set. Again, this is a one bar setup. So any bow you want for the back bar, if you want to run two bars, with some extra dots on the back. Pick any bow that you want. Could be a Maelstrom bow as well. Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's talk about the skills next on the one bar setup. Number one, Subterranean Assault. This comes from Animal Companions and uh, talk about big burst damage. Again, this is going to get buffed by all of our sets. So about 17.5k poison damage. If this thing happens to crit hit, and it will quite often, you're looking at about 30k upfront damage before you even get close to an enemy. That's how strong this build is. So yeah, you do want to run this. This is your main damage source. It also grants you some nice passives as well. Uh, like I said, Animal Companions, that's the second ability here. Make sure you morph it to Subterranean Assault because that is the stamina morph. Next up, Growing Swarm. This is another Animal Companions ability. And remember for this build, I wanted to focus on AOE damage specifically. I have literally no single target skills since grinding CP, you want AOEs anyways. Uh, Growing Swarm is really interesting because it's an AoE dot. Okay, so unleash a swarm of Fletcher Flies, causing your enemy to bleed for 16,000 damage. Enemies near the carrier take 2k bleed damage every 2 seconds for the duration. So nearby enemies will take the same amount of dot damage, if not more. Plus you apply minor vulnerability, so that's making them all take 5% uh, increased damage. So yeah, this is a damage over time, but it's a strong uh, AoE effect and a strong debuff, so it fits in nicely with the build, so I do recommend that. Then, Camouflage Hunter from the Fighter's Guild skill line. That's right here, that's our third ability. This is strictly for the passive bonus. What does it give us? It gives us weapon damage from the Fighter's Guild passives, gives us ultimate back from the Fighter's Guild passives, and it gives us major savagery, so that's increasing our crit chance. Very, very nice. Next up, let's talk about Bombard from the bow skill line. Very important buff for the Stamina Warden. It gives us extra stamina sustain. It also gives us major brutality. That increases our weapon damage. Uh, we get to remove one negative effect. It is free to cast. It even gives you a little mini heal through our Animal Companions passives. It's a really strong ability. So, yep, make sure you run that. Then, the ultimate. Uh, I really just wanted a passive ultimate that I wasn't going to need to cast necessarily. You can put lots of things here. You could put Permafrost. Uh, you could put the Bow Ultimate. You're going to actually get some nice bonuses from running Wild Guardian, though, from Animal Companions. Uh, we'll talk about passives again in a minute. But this is just a just a, your friendly neighborhood bear pet. He's going to damage enemies for you. Stand up on his back legs, do a big, huge bear swipe AoE, and pretty much finish off everything else 
um, that's in the area. So really nice ultimate to have uh, on the one bar setup. Let's uh, do a little demonstration, shall we? So your only buff, again, is bull netch. You're going to want to uh, find a group of enemies, start with sub assault, throw on your flies, and then bombard. That's it. So here we go. Let's do another group. Flies, bombard. See, everything pretty much explodes. Your barrel take care of anything else. All right, let's talk about quickly what are the passives you're going to need. Animal Companions is, is actually very good. Let's check these out. Bond with Nature, you want this. This gives you a bonus heal every time you summon one of those Animal Companions. So whether it's Sub Assault, Fetcher Flies, your Bull Netch, free healing is always good. Savage Beast gives you extra ultimate when you cast those Animal Companions abilities. Very good as well. Flourish, we got the extra Magicka and Stamina recovery from this passive. And then Advanced Species, bonus damage done uh, for each Animal Companion slotted. Look at that extra 8% damage with the way we set up this build. So as far as passives, Animal Companions get all of them. Now, green balance, we actually don't need to use any of these uh, unless you want to do like some healing skills on the back bar. Uh, that being said, if you just want to run one skill bar, you can save most of your skill points here, except for maturation. This is a very good passive you want to pick up regardless because this activates on any heal, whether it's the passive heal from Animal Companions or maybe a, a heal on your back bar. This is what gives you that minor toughness buff. That's 10% uh, max health for 20 seconds. Make sure you pick up that guy. Winter's Embrace, you can save uh, quite a few skill points here, to be honest. Now, in terms of our weapon abilities, yes, you want all of your bow passives. These are very, very useful. And then Medium Armor as well. Remember, these did get updated a little bit for uh, Update 29, Flames of Ambition. We now have Medium Armor bonuses, so we have reduced cost of sprint, reduced AoE damage, increased movement speed. The other thing here that did change is agility no longer you no longer need five pieces of medium armor to get this this now gives you two percent weapon damage for each piece of medium so you will want seven pieces of medium armor in most cases uh, that's going to give you the most weapon damage possible from this passive which is now 14 percent instead of 15 percent so keep that in mind what else what else fighters guild we talked about this a little bit uh slayers giving us three percent weapon damage Banish the Wicked, we get three ultimate back per kill. That's pretty nice as well. Psychic Order, Thieves Guild, we're not using uh, these Undaunted. You can get a little bit extra passive stats here. Of course, you want your racial passives, which we talked about. And then Alchemy Medicinal Use is always good for the extra potion duration. Let's talk about champion points next, uh, because a lot has changed in regards to the CP 2.0 system. Now, this being a CP grind build, you can actually play this build with no champion points if you want. And on my website uh, for the written version of this build, I will have 300, 600, 900, and 1200 CP versions listed on the website. So you can kind of see no matter where you are in the progression, um, how the build would look. But in terms of this video, I'll just give you kind of a brief look at how you would start and then kind of extend your points over time. So as far as the green tree goes, my absolute favorite, always start here, Steed's Blessing. This increases your movement speed by 20% for 50 points. I always drop my first 50 points there on any build for the extra movement speed. Then moving over here to the middle, Gilded Fingers. Since this is a grind focus build, you might as well earn extra gold while you're grinding, right? So this gives you 10% increased gold gained no matter what, so 50 more points there. Then we're gonna move up to Fortune's Favor. This increases the amount of gold you get in treasure chests, 50 points there. Uh, Wanderer for a bit of uh, cost reduction on Way Shrines, 30 points there. And then put 50 points into Breakfall, so that's 35% uh, reduced damage, reduced fall damage, which is pretty helpful if you happen to like wander off a cliff, which I do from time to time. Uh, then up here, Steadfast Enchantment. Just 10 points here will uh, let us to unlock Treasure Hunter. This is great if you happen to be in a zone uh, where you have some pieces of gear that you want. This will increase the quality of those items and treasure chests. You can go this way, or then you can also go down to get Rationer. This gives you up to 30 minutes extra duration on any food or drink. This is a really nice passive. 
And then my last favorite passive here, this is one of the most expensive. Liquid efficiency just makes your uh, potions free. Uh, you have a 10% chance not to consume them. So this will be great if you need to use expensive potions like tri-step potions, uh, weapon power potions, things like that. Very nice option there. So that's what I would recommend for the green setup. Let's talk about blue next. What do you start with? Uh, you always generally start in the middle. So drop 40 points into precision. This increases our critical chance. Then we're going to run over here to the sub constellation extended might. Put some points into piercing. Now I have 40 points here. You can start with just 10. Um, if all you have is 50, so you'll put 40 into precision, 10 into piercing. That's a total of 50 points. Once you unlock piercing, again, just 10 points to unlock it, that's going to uh, let you open up your more damage focused CP stars out here on the hand area. And the two main stars that I recommend you get next, it's gonna be Biting Aura. This increases your AOE damage. So, you know, our two basic abilities, Subtraining Assault, Bombard, those both get buffed by 10% uh, through the Biting Aura passive. And then Thaumaturge, this is going to increase that dot damage for the Fetcher Flies ability. Uh, so I recommend putting 50 points in there as well. Uh, this gives you a good source of damage just with only, what, 150 points invested here. From there, uh, you can extend further here on the head for more damage. Fighting Finesse is a very good slottable uh, perk here as well. This increases your crit damage and crit healing by another 10%. Remember, we already have 12% from being a Khajiit. So this is how we can put out those big damage numbers with the Fighting Finesse passive. And then our final damage passive, you can actually pick up over here at any time. Untamed Aggression, this increases our weapon and spell damage by 150. That does scale up with things like a Major Brutality, uh, just by the way. And then finally, you have some extra uh, damage here if you have the CP. Again, I'll have listings for 300, 600, 900, and 1200. If you're in the upper ranges, like above 700 and so, you can look at things like Battle Mastery and Mighty. Mighty adds another 100 weapon damage to your martial attack. So that's physical poison, disease, and bleed damage. That's a good one to pick up because it is passive. Uh, you don't need to slot this one to get the bonus. So that is our blue tree. And then finally coming over to red tree. Red tree is more about survivability and sustain. So with a grind focus build, I would focus on sustain first. And the way you can do that is coming over here to sprinter. And again, you don't have to put the full amount of points into these. You can just go up to the first stage. So for sprinter, you could just put 10. Um, for hasty, you could just put eight. For heroes vigor, just put 10, or you can put more for extra health. But that will let you, those three, one, two, three, that will let you unlock bloody renewal. And this is the absolute best CP star now in terms of these grind focus builds because it gives you 1500 stamina anytime you kill an enemy. 1500, that's like almost more than we'll be casting since we really only cast two or three abilities per enemy. This is tons of sustain, okay? So I recommend you go here first. So again, start with Sprinter, Hasty, Hero's Vigor. Once you put 10 points into Hero's Vigor, it unlocks this full uh, spectrum around the head of the constellation. And again, Bloody Renewal is what you want first. You can follow that up with a pretty cool CP star in Strategic Reserve. I uh, used this on another build recently. This gives you extra health recovery based on how much ultimate you have in reserve, like how much unused ultimate. So at 500 unused ultimate, I have 1500 extra health recovery on my build. That means I literally do not need to slot a heal. I mean, you saw my bar set up for the one bar build. No healing necessary. That's because I have almost 3000 health recovery through this passive. So I like this one. Again, you can slot other things, but this is pretty cool for a solo build, um, especially a range build where you don't need to worry about healing so much. The extra health recovery definitely helps. Uh, so we've got, again, Bloody Renewal, Strategic Reserve. And then for our other two slottables, we're going to pick up Boundless Vitality. 1,400 extra max health is really good. I do recommend that. And then Rejuvenation just for some extra uh, health, Magicka, and Stamina Recovery that will get buffed by things like your potions. So this is a very good option there as well. If you have more points, you can just put them in the passives here. So like Tumbling, 45 here reduces your dodge roll cost. Defiance, 40 here, reduces your break free cost. And then I did max out uh, Hasty and Sprinter just for the extra uh, sprint speed and sprint cost reduction. 
I think that covers just about everything. Like I said, if you want more help with the CP distribution, check out the written guide. I'll have different options there. Uh, I will also have the two bar version of this build in case you want to see what I would throw on the back bar. Uh, check that out. Finally, in terms of the um, outfit style, if you're curious, this is just a costume, actually. I'm sure most of you know this one. The uh, Golden Saint costume on my Khajiit. The bow here, that's Cadwell's bow. You can get that from Special Events. All right, everybody. And with that said, that's going to wrap up our solo Stam Warden CP grind build for uh, Update 29, the Flings of Ambition DLC. If you guys enjoyed this video or you found it informative, make sure you crush that like button for me. And for more build videos just like this one, make sure you're subscribed with those notifications turned on so you don't miss anything. In terms of updating content for ESO, I am really enjoying the grind focus builds. Uh, just like most of you, I am trying to increase my champion points on the live server. So these builds are really helping me do that. Uh, and they are just a lot of fun to play, I will admit. Other than that, I will be updating a lot of the builds on my website. Most of them are already up to date with the new CP 2.0 loadouts. Like I said, I'm focused on releasing versions of that for 300, 600, 900, and 1200 CP. So make sure you keep an eye out on the website for your favorite builds. If anything has major changes, then of course I will do a updated video guide on that as well as the written guide. So lots of content coming up, including even more guides for the Elder Scrolls Online. It's a great time to be playing the game and I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.